hearts and our lives. And I was thinking about Moses. And you know, something that stirred my heart was um, as, as when Moses, when God called Moses up to the mountain. Do you remember what he said? He said, Moses, says, I want you to come up to the mountain. I, we're going to talk. He said, but you go back down there and you tell them not to break through. Matter of fact, I want you to set a bound all the way around the mountain. And he said, and I, I want you to tell the people, don't even break through and look. And he said, you come up. And then, so the Bible said he went up and then the Lord sent him back. I said, now go back down there. And Moses was like, well, I told him already. He said, well, you just go back down there basically and tell him again. Tell him, don't come up. Tell him, you can come up, but they're supposed to stay down. Don't even touch this mountain. And so that Old Testament, that, that, that the, 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 the line around the mountain said, stand back. The veil said, stay back. The, uh, all of those things said, stay back. But when Jesus died on Calvary and the veil was ripped in two from the top to the bottom, it's no longer stay back. It's come on up. Amen. Come on in. Come on up. Come on up. And church tonight, I feel like the Lord would tell you and I, the call is come on up. Come on up. Oh, you stayed back long enough. You stayed down on the bottom side of the mountain long enough. You need to come up and let God touch your life. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm not preaching on that, but I am feeling good. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is so good. Praise the Lord. I want to make mention real quick. It's good to have our, our new dear friend, Sister Janie, here with us tonight. And uh, yes, and her friend. Amen. Uh, we, she did the radio interview with us that's going to be airing this Sunday on Heaven's Radio Gospel Hour. And so we're just so thankful and honored that she asked us to come in and glad that she joined us tonight. And I want to tell you, welcome to the family of God here at this church. We, we just um, always love it when we get to meet more of the family of God and the fellowship is just awesome. I want to make mention real quick, I told you all last night that on our website would be a link to that radio broadcast and it is there. I got that done last night. So if you go to themainclan.net, there is a button that you can click listen online. If you click on that, it goes to Sister Janie's a page and you can see past broadcasts and after this Sunday the one about the man clan is going to be on there so if you want to check it out it'll be there so here's a song that says forever faithful forever true Guides me through forever. And 
the Lord. We're just going to do one more song. It says, all my life, you have been faithful. All of my life, God, you have been so, so good. I'm thankful for the goodness of God tonight.
Praise God. Aren't you glad for the goodness of God? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You know, uh, that, that little tag there, his goodness is running after me. The Bible does talk about that. It talks about that the goodness would overtake you. That's what the Bible says in Deuteronomy, that if you live for God, and you'll be obedient to the commands of God and obey God and his word. The Bible said that his goodness would overtake you. He goes on to say that if you don't, then uh, the curses will overtake you. But I sure like the goodness is overtaking you. Amen. And uh, that kind of the idea is uh, uh, you're walking along in your life and all of a sudden the goodness of God just jumps all over you. Amen. That's kind of the, 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 the take behind that scripture. I'm not preaching on that. Turn to Psalms tonight. Psalms chapter number 139 of this road warrior is going to get after it. <laughs> well, you had to be here last night. Anyway, praise God. Hallelujah. Psalms chapter number 139 tonight, and we're going to begin reading in verse number one. Read a few verses here, taking our text from that fifth verse, but I want to read Psalms chapter number 139 Looking at verse number one. Again, while you're turning there, thank you again to the McMaris for all that wonderful food. We have put it into ministry. Hallelujah. And it was just wonderful. Also want to say thank you to our coffee maker. Hallelujah. She's taking care of us with them tuxedos. Yes, yes. Yes. Anyway, and uh, uh, the Lord's good to us. Psalms chapter number 139. And uh, begin reading with verse number one. The Bible says, O oh Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my down sittings and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Thou compassest my path and my lying down, and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O oh Lord, thou knowest it all together. Right. Wow. Right, right. He knows everything about yes, you. Yes, and I mean everything. Verse 5 says, Thou hast beset me behind and before and laid thine hand upon me. Amen. Oh, I like that. Thou Amen. hast beset me behind and before and laid thy hand upon Amen. me. If the Lord had helped me tonight, I want to preach to you for just a little while on this thought of his hand on me. His hand on me. Let's pray. Father, we love you tonight. We thank you for your love and your mercy and your goodness. We thank you, God, for your opportunity you've given us to come and gather together in your house and in your presence. And Lord, I stand in dire need of thy anointing. Ask you, Lord, to set my soul on fire for you, to preach your word, anoint our ears to hear, hearts to receive. Move as we gather around these altars. Lamb of God, I ask you to lay your hand upon us tonight. And God, we give you the praise for it in Jesus' wonderful, glorious, holy, majestic, mighty name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Preach a little while tonight simply on this thought of his hand on me. Now, the Bible said here in the reading of our text, the first four verses basically tells us this. He knows everything about you. He knows your ways. He knows you're rising up. You're sitting down. He knows your thoughts are far off. He knows the word. It's in your tongue even before you let it slip through your lips. Amen. I mean, he knows everything. He knows everything. I'm, you know, I better just stop right now and see what I am tonight. Amen. Well... <laughs> Oh, I think I like Road Warrior better. But anyway, praise God. We better just go on tonight. Anyway, but he knows everything about you. He knows everything. Uh, we, we, we talk about God's omniscience. He knows everything. And he knows everything about you. And matter of fact, the Bible said this. The Bible said he knows what you have need of before you ask. How do you understand that we've been singing about prayer and kind of talking about prayer a little bit tonight? How do you understand prayer is not informative? When we come to an altar and we get to pray, we're not telling God anything he doesn't already know. Okay? We're not, you know, when we get done praying, God's like, oh, man, why did you tell me? I didn't know you were having those problems. Man, why didn't you tell me? You're, you know, no, no. That, God's, you're not informing God of anything. God already knows. The Bible said, Jesus said, your heavenly Father knoweth what you have need of before you ask. As a matter of fact, the Bible said, I'm going to answer even before you call. Sometimes he's got to send the answer on the way even before we call. You know, you've heard the stories how uh, you'll... you'll You'll pray for something the next day. The answer's in the mail. Well, he already sent the answer two weeks ago. It just takes the mail two weeks to get there, you know. And so, so God, he knows everything about you, knows everything about me. He reminded me of that song. He knew me, yet he loved me. Oh, hallelujah. He knew me, yet he loved me. 
Hallelujah. That's right. Take this off. And so he knows everything about us. He knows us, and yet he loves us. That, that is a hallelujah. He knows us, yet he loves us. Yeah. And then the Bible said this. The Bible said in verse number five, and he is beset before me and behind me. I like that. He's beset me yes. before yes. and behind. And uh, the idea there is uh, he's, uh, that, that's the word in the verbiage you would use when an army would lay siege to a city. They would surround the city. They would beset it before and behind. It was, uh, it was an idiomatic expression of the day, meaning they would completely, totally surround. And he would be all over the place. And, and that was the idea that God was saying. God was saying, not only do I know everything about you, but I'm surrounding you. Yeah. I'm on your right hand. I'm on your left hand. Yeah. I'm right behind you. Yeah. I'm right in front of you. Yeah. Before you get there, I'm already there. If you look over here, I'm there. I'm right here. I'm everywhere. Hallelujah. Yeah. Oh, what a blessing to know when you're going through the trials, he's right there. When you're going through the troubles, he's yeah. on the other. He's already been through it. He knows. Hallelujah. Right. He beset me before. He beset me behind. The encouraging God. He knows all about me, and he surrounds me. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But it doesn't stop there. This is what I want to get to tonight. Uh, he knows all about you, and he surrounds you. And then he said this, not only that, but then he laid his hand on me. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, I like that. Tonight, I'm thankful that he knows all about me. I'm thankful that he surrounds me. But, oh, I'm thankful that he wants to lay his hand upon me. Tonight, we didn't come just to go through the motions of a church service, but we've come to ask God to lay his hand on us. Ask God to touch our hearts. Ask God to touch our lives. Oh, you need God to lay his hand hand on you. Amen. Oh, that's the idea of closeness. That's the idea of God being right there just to reach out and lay his hand on you. Hallelujah. And so quickly tonight, looking at a few things, when he lays his hand on us, I mean, no, one thing he does is that hand would, well, you know what I thought about, let me real quick before we get to this, is I thought about, there's an old song years ago when I got saved. Now, when I got saved, I didn't know anything about gospel music. I, I was a I was pure heathen, you know, uh, when I got saved. And so I, I'm saved now, and, and so I'm trying to find some gospel music. And I found an old, an old record that my mom had, and, and uh, it was uh, this group singing gospel. I'm like, hey, praise God, I put it on. And there was an old song on there, you know, I, record. She was like, What's all the records are coming back, amen. Hallelujah, come on. My daughter just got a record player for, for Christmas two years ago. But anyway, amen. Oh, the, oh, the, they don't call them records, they're vinyls, excuse me, vinyl. Yeah, we Got to, we got to get the lingo, huh? They're vinyl, amen. And uh, and so the uh, I pulled out an old vinyl and uh, and I put and had an old song. It said, "I would crawl all the way to the river. I'd crawl all the way to the sea just to watch him walk on the water and lay his loving hand on me." Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah! Tonight, oh, I'd crawl. I would why? just to have him lay that loving hand on me. Tonight, my desire is when we come and gather around these altars. And God would lay his hand on us. You need that. I need that. We need God to lay his hand on us. First of all, tonight when he lays his hand on us, how many you know, and these aren't in a specific order. These are just some things that his hand will do when he lays it on us. How many you know, his hand will lead you. When he lays his hand on you, it's his hand that will lead you. The Bible said in Psalm 23, we know it, uh, he leadeth me beside still waters. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Lead me, O Lord, Psalm chapter 5, Isaiah 46, and I will bring them by the blind by a way that they know not, and I will lead them in paths that they have not known. How I many know oh, God wants to lead you? God wants to direct you. Let me preach to young people for a minute. God wants to lead you in your life. God wants to direct you. He's got a plan. And I can tell you God's plan is better than any plan you could ever make up. God wants to lead you. And if you let him lay his hand on you, he'll lead you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let God lead you. He wants to lay his hand on you. He wants to lead you. You know, my children, um, as when, they were, when they were small, I'd get my kids in my, in my lap as I was playing the drums, and I'd put drumsticks in their hands. And they couldn't play. They could swing them, but they couldn't play. So I'd grab their hands, <laughs> and I, I would play the drums, their hand in my hand, and, and I was teaching them. Right. You know what I was doing? I was leading them, huh? Right. I was leading them. And right. got a little bit bigger. I, I'd lead them. Amen. And by the time my boy was eight years old, he started playing drums in church. And, and why did dad would lead him, how I'd lead him, I'd place my hands on his hands and teach him how to do it. Yeah. Oh, how you know God wants to place his hand yes. on your hand yes. and teach you how to do it? Hallelujah. Oh, glory. I said, he glory. He wants to. I said, he wants to. His hand, he wants to lay his hand on you to lead your moms and dads through some str struggles and troubles 
and trials and storms. God wants to lay his hand on you That's and right. lead you. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Can I, can, I, can, I just, uh, can I get down in the pragmatics down where the rubber meets the road? I know he can lead you down which aisle of the grocery store you need to go. That's that you right. might run into somebody that needs Jesus at just the right time, Amen. at just the right place. Yes. He'll give you just the right words to say. He wants to lead you. Yes. He wants to lead you. Mm. I can get on with it. Show out hand. His hand placed upon us to lead us. Yeah. You know, another thing about his hand upon us, he'll lay his hand on us to protect us. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes, huh, moms and dads, you, you, you know that. Oh, yeah. You're driving in that car yeah. and your kid's in the front seat and all of a sudden you got to slam on your brakes. What's the first thing you do? Oh, yeah. huh, that hand, it's just automatic. You don't have to think about it. It's just, it's automatic. I mean, it's like it's connected to the brakes. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, it just, it's just one of those deals. And I think it works faster than the brakes do. <laughs> you know, I mean, you, you know what that is? That's that hand of protection. Yeah. Wanting to protect that child. I know God said, I'm going to lay my hand of protection upon you. Yeah. Oh, you think about yeah. that, Dad. So, oh, yeah, how, how protective you are of your little one. God said, yeah. I'm that protective of my children. Yeah. I'll lay my hand upon them. I'll protect them. The Bible said in Ezra chapter number 7, verse number 9, he said, upon the first day of the month, I began he to go up from Babylon. And on the first Day, excuse me, on the first day of the first month, he began to leave Babylon. And on the first day of the fifth month, he came to Jerusalem according to the good hand of his God upon him. He made the four-month journey, and everything was all right. Why? Because God's good hand of protection was upon him. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 23 gives us a great illustration of this. He said, oh, Jesus, and oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how oft I would have gathered thee together as a chick doth gather her chicks under her wings. Oh, and you would not. What he wanted to do was, I know that of protection. That mother hen gets those little chicks and he pulls, she pulls them up close and gets them wings over. Oh man, hallelujah. And protects them. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. In his wings shalt thou come to trust. God said, I want to protect you with my hand. You've heard the stories about the fires that swept through uh, the uh, uh, the the, the uh, Plains in the Midwest of years gone by, and the man that went back to find his house and everything was burnt down. Uh, but as he was walking through, he saw the uh, one of the chicken that had been roasted, basically, and he just kind of kicked it over. When he did, the little chicks come running out from underneath the wings of the mama. Oh, the hand was protecting. Can I tell you, the Son of God laid down His life for me and you, uh, that He might protect us from the onslaught of hell. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! You know. Talk a lot about my papa. When y'all get there, you look him up. You're gonna feel like you know him. You've heard so much about him from me. But anyway, but my papa, he he's a big, he just uh just a stout, I mean stout as a boy, had big old hands. He fell timber for 25 years, carried a chainsaw in the woods, weighed 120 pounds, uh, full of gas and oil. He's just a hoss of a man. And then he had logging trucks and and he'd always keep he had these big old hands. And as a boy, he'd always kid me. He'd put them hands up like this, and he'd go, Bud, which one do you want? he said, say, you want six months in the hospital, or do you want the mortuary? <laughs> you know, oh, yeah, right. One day, we're little boys. I don't know. I was about fourth grade, and, and we were out of his place. He lived out in the country, and me and some of my friends were riding up and down the old dirt roads out there, bicycles and motorcycles. We were just having a great time. All of a sudden, this old guy come out. He's got a big old long stick, and he starts chasing us. Grown man chasing us with this stick, mad at us, hollering at us. Uh, we just went on back up to Papa's place, and he's like, boys, what's up? And he said, well, and we said, man, there's this guy down there. He's he been chasing us with a stick. Well, whew, that's Orville Baker's grandson you just chased with a stick, and he wasn't real happy. And about that time, that, a car come pulling in, and it was that old man. And my Papa said, boys, y'all wait over there by the woodshed. I'll take care of this. So we just went over there, or wood pile. We just went over there by the wood pile. And that guy pulled up. He rolled down his window. My grandpa got to talking to him. I don't know what he was saying. My papa got to talking to him. And then uh, we can't hear him. But pretty soon my papa, he just takes one step backward. And there they go. He stuck both them hands in there. I thought, oh, no. Lord, don't let him hit him with the mortuary. 
Don't let him hit him with the mortuary. You know, not good. Oh, he stepped back. He put them big old hands up. You know what? That old boy rolled that window up, man. He peeled out. He didn't want nothing to do with either six months in the hospital or the mortuary. He said, I ain't taking no chances. I'm out of here, huh? Oh, hallelujah. Why? Because he done messed with the wrong one. Can I tell you, I'm the apple of his eye. I said, I'm, oh. I said, I'm the apple. I said, I'm the apple of his eye. Hallelujah. And when hell messes with me, he's messing with the apple of his eye. And I can tell you what the father doesn't take too kindly to the devil messing with his children. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That hand of yes. protection. That's right. That's right. That's hand to lead us, hand to protect us. That's right. You know, that hand will also uphold you. Yes. It's the hand to Hallelujah. uphold you. The Bible said in Isaiah 41 and 10, Fear thou not, I am with thee. Be not dismayed, I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Hallelujah. He said in Psalms 37, Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. Hallelujah. Psalm 63, My soul followeth hard after thee. Thy right hand upholdeth me. Can I tell you, his hand wants to hold you up. I said his hand wants to hold you up. Amen. Thought about it today. We're doing a little work, and my boy's trying to reach a screw, and he's a little bit high, and he's stepping on this deal, and there's just a little ledge, and he couldn't, you know. So I just grabbed my hand, I stuck him up against, I just held him up like this, and I held him in place so he could reach way up there and, and screw in the right. screw, huh? And I thought, you know what? That's what the Lord does. Yes, we get in those situations where, yes. in reality, it's pretty much impossible to stand, right. but all of a sudden his hand comes in to uphold us. Right. Oh, you didn't catch that. I said, we get in those situations where it seems impossible to stand, right. and God comes in with that hand, Lord, and he upholds us. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. His hand. As Peter began to sink in the midst of the storm, you know what it was that upheld him? It was the hand of the master. He laid his hand on me. Oh, i got to get on. He'll uh, lay his hand on you. Fourth thing about that hand, if that's where I'm at, number four, I guess. Not only will his hand lead you and protect you and uphold you, but have you know, it'll comfort you. Just something about the touch of that hand. He said in Revelation chapter number one, when John falls at his feet because he had seen the Christ and he falls at his feet as a dead man, the first thing that Jesus did, the Bible said, when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead and he laid his right hand on me. I like that. Saying to me, fear not, I am the first and the last. Oh, there is something about the, the, the comfort of that touch of the master's hand. Hallelujah. I mean, he wants to touch you tonight. Bring you comfort in your storm. Bring you comfort in your trial. There's something about that touch. He said, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I remember, uh, I guess, thinking about popping today, I guess. I remember I was a kid. And, uh, hey, I, I can take COVID. ain't got nothing on the Taiwan flu, man. Oh, I had, I thought I was going to die. And, uh, no, I'm just, you know, <laughs> it, it was bad. And I got it. And, uh, and uh, I remember I'm, I'm laying on the floor. I mean, it's so bad. I'm weak. I can't even get up. And I was a freshman in high school. And, and my, you know, and my mom tried to raise us, and she can't get me up. And I, I'm, I'm laying there. I'm thinking, it, it's over. I'm done. I'm, I'm, I'm dead. It's your history. They wanted to get me to the hospital, but mom couldn't get me up and get me in the car. And, and so my papa came down. Papa came down. He saw me there. You know what he did? He took them big old hands, and he just reached down, picked me up. I mean, like I was a 50-pound pack of potatoes, man. He just, no big deal. He just go walking out through there. Threw me in that car, drove me up to the doctor, pulled me out, man, laid me in there, laid me on that gurney. Oh, you know what? Wasn't no problem at all. Why? Because I knew Papa was there. Yeah. I never even one time thought, oh, no, he's going to drop me. No, the hand of comfort was there. I was comforted in the hour of trouble. I was comforted in the hour of, uh, of sickness, in the hour of storms. Why? Because his hand of comfort, just something about that touch of the hand. You might be going through something tonight. You know what? God wants to just touch you. Just lay his hand on you. Just comfort you in the midnight hour. Comfort you. You know how your kids, something happens, and what they want to do, they want to get close. Get up there close to mom or dad. Why? So mom and dad can touch them, make them feel better. Right. Kids right. get hurt. Well, I mean, I just, first thing I do, I just grab them and touch them. They just, right. the hand of comfort. I got to get on with this. God wants to lay his hand on you tonight. He can comfort you. Yes, he will. Comfort you. Yes, he will. Sometimes we go through painful things in life. 
Just because we're born again doesn't, doesn't say we won't have the pain in our life. There'll, there'll be th troubles and trials, and, and we'll go through painful things. But there's nothing like the comfort of the master to come along during those painful times and help us out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. His hand of comfort. You know what? You know, sometimes he has, to, he has to lay that hand of correction upon us. Now, I know we don't like this, but how many know sometimes we need it? Everybody just smile at me. Amen. Think I'm talking to your neighbor. Sometimes we need that hand of correction. And uh, I, I will put it this way. I'm glad that I got the hand of correction as a kid. It, it made me walk straight. You know what I'm talking about? That hand of correction was laid upon me. There's times when God has to correct us. Not because he hates us, but because he loves us. And he wants us to stay in that right way. Keeping us out of things. I remember one day I was in I was in uh, Indiana. And it's back before we had our bus. We had our fifth wheel. And, and I pulled in to get diesel. And I had a uh, 30 six gallon tank in the truck and I had an extra 40 gallon tank in the back of the bed and I was about empty. Both tanks were about empty. So I pulled in. I need 70 gallons of diesel. And I pull in and I grab the diesel pump and I start to pump and that pump was going like this. One, two, three. And that was not gallons. It was cents. Four, five, six. I'm thinking I am going to be here all day long. And I was already getting a little bit later start than I wanted to because of well, anyway, and uh, <laughs> I didn't say nothing. I didn't say it. Amen. And, uh, and so, you know, you just kind of, and, and I, I've got, I've still got over eight hours to drive to get to our next place. And, and I pull in to get diesel and this thing's going so slow. And, and I get out and I check the oil five times and I wash every window twice. And, and I go back and I've got $5 in. I mean, it's just, I'm like, ah! And I'm getting frustrated and I'm getting irritated. And Holy Ghost convicted me at hand of correction. Calm down, boy. Calm down. Amen. Don't want to. <laughs> okay, Lord. Finally, finally, it seemed like two hours. I finally got my diesel in, and, uh, and I get on the road, and I, I head out of Indianapolis, and, and I hadn't got maybe 15, 20 miles outside of town, come to a complete stop. I'm in, now I'm thinking, oh, this is great. Now I'm in stop and go traffic. Ah! And that frustration starting to rise back up again. Holy Ghost convicting again. Just calm down, calm down. All of a sudden, I realized the reason it was stopping the traffic is it was an accident. Yeah. I pulled up to it. It's a very bad accident. It's a large 18-wheeler, all kinds of cars. There were things everywhere. And just as I got right up next to it, Holy Ghost spoke to my heart and said, See? See? <laughs> Oh, thank oh God, forgive me. Lord, I'm sorry. You know, sometimes he has to lay that hand of correction upon us just to help us and keep us out of things and keep us away. Hallelujah. Thank God for that hand upon us. God wants to lay his hand upon us. I got I to try to quit. I don't even know. Uh, the, the, God wants to lay his hand upon us and help us. I know God wants to help you tonight. Can I tell you that? I'm just praying before service. This man, God just encouraged my heart. God wants to help you. We need help, and he wants to help us. That's a pretty good deal, huh? I mean, that's like folks that like to cook, and I like to eat. That's a great pair. Praise God. You like to cook? I like to eat. Praise God. You know, my, my daughter likes to make cookies. I like to eat cookies. Praise God. Well, I mean, we need help, and God likes to help. You're not catching me. I said, we need help, and God likes to help, and he yes. wants to help you. He wants to lay that hand of help on you. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. That hand to come out and help you. I remember when I was a kid, you know, a little kid, and, and uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be, be, be tough like Papa. I'm going to be strong like Papa. My grandma's in the kitchen. She's got her fresh canned stuff that she canned, and she can't get it open. She said, can you open this? And, oh, Mama, I, I called her Momo. I said, Momo, I can open that. I grabbed that thing, man. I'm, <laughs> damn she, I got no, no, I get, I get. I grab a rag, you know, and I, I mean, I'm straining. I'm just a little kid. I'm straining because I want to open this. Man, my papa comes by and said, "Bud, let me help you." And he just leaves my hand right on that lid, and he just puts that big old hand right over and goes, "Crink." Like, yeah, of course, broke all my knuckles, but it felt good. Um, you know, I mean, he just, that big old hand, just, that big old hand there went, <clears throat> you know what he was doing? He was helping me. Hallelujah. How do you know God wants to come by? Maybe, you, you, maybe you're here tonight and you kind of feel like this. God said, if you'll bring it to the altar, I'll help you with it. No, you didn't catch that. If you'll bring it to that altar, I'll help you with it. Hallelujah. I can help you. Oh, somebody. Just let me put my big hand on it. Let me put my big hand on it. I'll help you. I'll help you. I'll help you. It's that hand to help us. The last thing is this. Come on, you two. Now you know the last thing is this. He wants to lay his hand on you 
just to bless you. Amen. Just to bless you. Right. That hand being laid upon you was a type of blessing. Do you remember when Joseph was about to, or excuse me, when um, Jacob was about to die and Joseph brought his two boys to him? The Bible said his father, yeah. Jacob, laid yeah. his hands on Joseph's yeah. boys. I uh, know right hand or left hand, but that... Uh, Right now, that's really not, it doesn't matter. He laid his hands, both hands, right and left. They were both the type of blessing. I mean, God wants to lay his hand on you. God wants to lay that hand of blessing on your life. Hallelujah. And I'm not, yes, don't misunderstand me. Yes, he'll meet our needs. He takes care of us. He provides. But I'm talking something better than that. I mean, he wants to lay his hand on you and bless you with himself and bless you with his presence and bless you with the goodness of who he is. Hallelujah. Nehemiah. Chapter number two, yeah. things were destroyed. Yeah. It was a mess that lied in waste. It was a type of the church that was a mess. And Nehemiah came back and said, We got to have revival. Yeah. We got to rebuild the walls. Yeah. We got to get God back in this thing. And the Bible said he told him of the good hand of God that was on him. He said, God will help me. I've come to tell you tonight. I know hell would try to tell you we can't have revival. We can't have a move of God. We can't have a touch of heaven. It's about over and it's dark and it's night. I've come to tell you. God says, I want to lay my good hand on you and I want to bless my people. Even in the last days. Stand with me, please, tonight. His hand on me. He wants to lay his hand on you, lead you, uphold you, protect you. Comfort you. Yes. May need to correct you, but he wants to help you. He does. And he wants to bless you. Yes, he does. Tonight, my desire is God, would you lay your hand? Yes. Lay your hand on me. Let's pray. Father, we love you tonight. We thank you for your love and your mercy and your goodness for Calvary, the cross, for the bloodshed, for our pardon. Ask your Lamb of God to deal with every heart and every life. And ministers, we come and move around these altars. God, we need you. God, some need a touch of comfort. Some need a touch of help. Some need a touch of correction. Some need a touch of, of leading. Some need a touch of upholding. God, some just need a touch of blessing. But tonight, I'm asking you as we gather around these altars that you would lay your hand upon every heart and upon every life and move upon every soul. God, lay your hand upon us. May we leave this place tonight knowing that you have touched us yes. and God will thank you for it in Jesus glorious name this a little bit differently tonight around these altars we're going to do this we're going to play and sing and oh, we're just going to open these altars and, and invite you why don't you come let's gather around these altars find us a place to pray and let God lay his hand on you let God whether it's comfort whether it's